On the 1st of April, I did this little video about a one key keyboard, a one key per hand keyboard. And I looked at the layout that I came up with there and I showed that I'd actually gone ahead and ordered some PCBs from PCB Way uh, to make that keyboard. And in this video, I'm gonna show the process of building, soldering together that one key keyboard. Now this keyboard uses the format that I've been using for my current custom keyboards. And that is that they've got the reset switch, the power slider, the JSD battery connector, and they use batteries with the nice nano for a fully wireless build and we're using hot swappable chock key switches on these as well so obviously this one key keyboard idea is a sort of a joke that's gone a little bit too far um, but it's really interesting to see this process and this is actually quite a good way of showing the build process for these custom keyboards because obviously you can add more keys and create a useful keyboard uh, in in the layout that suits you but using the same format so I'm going to include links in the description to all of the bits that you need to build one of these. And then obviously you can look at the other video that I've done on the process of using Ergogen and KiCad to design your own fully fledged keyboard. And you can apply this build process to those keyboards too. And uh, you can actually, if you want to order this one key keyboard, I've got the files um, added to the shared library on PCB Way. So you can kind of basically with one click order the exact same keyboard here uh, and try this for yourself. They're actually quite a useful thing to have around just for sort of quickly testing a nice nano controller or something like that. And you could set them up as a macro key or whatever you know it could be could be quite fun to use like that PCB way are kindly sponsoring this video and they supplied me these boards as well with the gold finish and the purple color so they look great and I'd highly recommend them as a PCB fabricator they also do CNC and 3d printing and all sorts of other stuff as well so unfortunately the shipping side delayed these boards and didn't quite arrive in time for my 1st of April video that I did on the single key per hand keyboard uh, but they've arrived now and we're going to look at the process of building them right now and we're going to jump straight in with the slider switch on the board here because this is the thing that's the most fiddly and, and most prone to fail. So I like to get this done first. So you can see I'm just touching the pads, putting a bit of solder on those pads. And I'm not doing the one that isn't used at the back there, just the two connected ones. And then we grab this tiny little slider switch and we place it in place so that the pegs are lined up with the holes and it's ready to sink into place there. Now I'm applying that downward pressure with the tweezers. And then I'm just going to add the heat and push down with the tip of the soldering iron on the feet so that it sinks into the pad. You can see actually that bounced back up a little bit. I should have applied a bit more downward pressure there. Do the same the other side. And it sinks into place. Wait for the solder to solidify before you take that downward pressure off. And then I'm just looking at the two contacts on the back. So these are the ones that actually hook up to the traces on the board to create the circuit and just push them down. And then we can use a multimeter to actually check that everything is working here. So with the slider on and off, we can check that we're, we're seeing that circuit completed. So I'm just measuring up there to see how many pins I need to snap off of the machine sockets. And we're gonna go ahead and add some flux to the board here and solder these jumpers. So this footprint on the board here is a clever footprint that allows the nice nano controller to face up on both halves of a split board. Obviously with a single keyboard, it doesn't matter so much. If you had a full keyboard and you want the controllers the same side facing you on both, then this, this footprint allows that to happen just by soldering together these jumpers and in this case, we're soldering them on the face of the board that faces you. So essentially, the nice nano is going to cover up this side of the board. So you don't even see these soldered jumpers in this orientation. And this will allow the nice nano to have its logo facing you. So that's the sort of way that we're orienting these. So just sort of adding heat to both halves of that uh, jumper solder pad there. And I'm now just testing the continuity of those. I'm just touching the back of the blob of solder and then the through hole just to make sure that through hole is connected to that pad. We know the back of the pad's connected to the trace routes on the board. So that shows that those jumpers have all worked. So now I'm just adding some flux to the back here over the through holes in preparation for putting the sockets in. So we're just going to drop these sockets into place here. And it's much easier to actually have both of them in place so that you've got a bit of stability to the board. So I'm just going to tuck in the other one as well. Okay, so I'm kind of positioning that over the top of the sockets now. There is still a bit of play there, so you sort of have to hold it so that they're as upright as, as you can and then get one of these pins soldered in to, to sort of add that stability so that it makes it a bit easier to do the rest of it. And we're just going to go ahead and add some heat to the edge of the through hole and the pin at the same time so they're both hot and then you'll see the solder flow down in the gap. And you just sort of push the solder towards that joint now this is definitely not a soldering tutorial video i'm absolutely no expert in soldering um, this is more about showing you how it's actually quite approachable to do this with basically no soldering experience uh, you can actually build a custom keyboard quite easily even if you're just fudging it like me here so i'm going to stick some masking tape over the top of those sockets now 
and then we're going to use the legs of these diodes and I'll put the link to the exact diodes I'm using here for the thickness of these wires they're just right so I'm just pushing that through the tape into the socket hole and you'll feel it go in and stop at the bottom and then we're going to use these little snips just to snip off and um, we're allowing make sure we allow enough for the controller to sit over the top of that and we keep going until we've got uh, a leg in each of the socket holes basically and then we can get our nice nano controller and place it over the top and make sure the pins are coming through each of the holes there and then we can solder that onto those legs basically the same process as putting the sockets onto the board itself you heat up the through hole and the leg and just drop some solder into the hole add a bit of heat push the solder in and move along. This is the awful process of getting this out now so if it's slightly sticky and, and stuck in there it's really quite hard to pry out. You want to do this dead evenly so that you don't bend the pins on one end and what tends to happen is you have to put so much force on it that it pings off but this approach of just putting a little knife in and twisting on it's not great for the knife but you can just keep that sort of movement even all the way down and just slowly pry it out. Um, I'll actually show you a shot where I completely flinged it off and, and bent it. That was okay, that came out all right that, on that one. You can adjust them a little bit, but here I actually pinged this off and, and it bent the pins quite badly, so we can take a look at that. Just be careful of this, try and avoid this happening. So I've just lost it now, basically it's pinged off somewhere. Uh, and when I find it, you can see it's made a real mess of these legs. But luckily they did bend back without snapping off, so you just kind of straighten them out ready. And then obviously as you put it back into the socket, they'll find their sort of proper placement at that point and then we're going to use the snips and just trim off the tops where it's slightly uneven just to neaten the top off there so these very precise uh, snips here will actually get in and trim the end off each one again I'll link to those snips in the description below so the footprint for this JST battery connector is a little bit too wide I actually fixed that uh, if you watch the video I've done uh, on the keyboard design in Ergogen and KiCad you'll see how I fixed that footprint here uh, but it's still okay you can just splay the legs out a little bit and they'll still fit in here just fine and then we can pop some solder in there again you'd want to trim the ends of those off with the snips again so that's our battery connector in place uh, I got these shots a little bit in the wrong order you'll see I'm doing the reset button now but the uh, sockets and uh, battery connector are not actually on this board at this point. Again, we've got two tiny pads, so we just add a bit of heat just for a very short amount of time, pop some solder on there, and you don't want the iron too hot because you can burn those pads off the board quite easily. We get the tiny little reset button, and these things are so dinky, um, and we're going to place it over the top of the pads, and then in the same way, we just basically add that heat to the foot of the, uh, the switch there and push it down onto the top of the blob of solder and it sinks in. Let's do that on both sides. And then we can check that that works by finding the reset and ground pins on the socket and pushing the button there. And you'll hear the beep from the multimeter. So let's get the, the hot swap socket switch on the back here. So we flip it over, add some solder to these pads. I don't think I had the iron quite hot enough there. The solder didn't flow all around the pad. Make sure you've got lots of flux on those and, and the heat is reasonable. So this is a bigger pad so it can take more heat. I think my iron was again a little bit not quite hot enough here. So you see it bounced back again there. I didn't sort of keep it in place properly. I'm not really applying enough downward pressure. You want to make sure that can sink into place as soon as the solder is reflowing. I actually have to do this a couple of times to get this to sink into place. Basically these hot swap sockets need to be completely flush on the back of the board so they sink right into place and they've got little pegs underneath that sink into a, to the hole in the board to make sure they're in the right place. You can still see there's a tiny gap there so I'm going to sink it down a bit more. So just keeping that downward pressure there, make, making sure the solder is finished reflowing before we release that downward pressure. And now we can see it's dead flush with the board. There's no gap underneath it. So, uh, so now we can pop the switch into place here now and we can see how that's looking. And we just so squeeze that through. I like to kind of push the back of the socket as I'm doing that just to avoid any pressure pushing the, the socket off the back of the board. 
So this is the horrendously fiddly bit. We're going to con con we're going to add the connector to the end of our battery. So the battery is supplied just with bare terminals on the ends of the wire. So we use the JST plug, and we need to first crimp on these tiny little connectors. You can see what I'm pointing at there with the tweezers. There's a little sort of notch on the bottom of the metal bit, and a little groove in the plug here, which you can see. So that is what lines up. Now the main thing here is working out which one is the positive and which one's negative. So if you follow the trace route around, you can make sure you're using the right one here. You can see which way around that plug's got to go and then make sure you're putting it into the right side of this plug when you push this in. So it's just a question of pushing it in and you'll see that little notch on the metal bit goes all the way through and shows in the little gap there, the other side of that plastic clip. And it, it clicks in so it won't come back out once that's in place. And then you can go ahead and actually just click it into the socket. Just slide it in and then we can sort of tuck the battery down into the space between the controller sockets. Just find a sort of try and get the wire in a neat position and check we've got the voltage reading in the right places there on the live and ground uh, pins on that socket with a, with the switch on and off obviously make sure that works and then add the controller to our socket over the top of the battery. And then we're done, we can turn it on with the slider switch and we'll see the blue light on the controller come on. So it's gone straight into its bootloader mode because this is the first time we've turned this nice nano on. So the blue light's just flashing, ready for that first flash of firmware. So hopefully that's been a useful look at how to build one of these keyboards based on my kind of framework of these bit, these particular components here. Uh, you can obviously download my fork of ErgoGen and start building keyboards using these uh, and then move into KiCad and just upload to PCBWay and, and have these boards built and sent to you. And you can change these boards as time goes on because we've got all these footprints ready to go in ErgoGen and KiCad. So that build process, uh, do check out the other video I've done on that full walkthrough where you can see how this is done and you can tailor this process to build your own custom keyboard exactly for you so please like share comment and subscribe i'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on this build process and in particular if you've got any tips for how to improve the soldering uh, which are, is obviously not the best in this video i'd love to read about those in the comments below too and i'll see you in the next video